Hello and welcome to another Sugar Effects tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how to use Adobe Premiere Pro markers as a main tool to create the subtitles when using Subtitles 4.0. In this second part of the video, I want to show you how to create markers inside Adobe Premiere. I have another sequence in here, it's exactly the same edit, but I don't have any markers. So the first thing that I want to point out to you is that there are two different types of markers that you can create inside Adobe Premiere. One of those markers is when you select your video, like I am doing here, and if you press the letter M in your keyboard, you're going to create a marker. That marker is created inside the clip. Of course, we are not going to be using these markers, but I'm showing you that you can create a marker when you have a clip selected. So I'm going to undo that action because the markers that we want to create are called timeline markers. The timeline markers require that you don't have any clip selected. You move the playhead to the location that you're supposed to go and create the marker and press the letter M in your keyboard once again so it creates a marker on the top of the timeline. If you press the letter M again, then the dialog box to edit that marker shows up. And then you can put the name, which is not necessary for the export of the subtitles. You can change the duration in here. And in here in the comments, you will put the subtitle text. This is the main area where the subtitles are supposed to be typed and they are going to be decoded later on in the process. You will leave all the other parameters alone and then you can say OK you will see that your marker is actually on the top of the timeline. At this moment, you can take the right side little tab and move it forward or backward to change the out point. You can also do the same thing to the beginning, or if you grab it from the center in the green area, you can move the entire marker forward or backward. That way you can match precisely the marker with the voiceover or the dialogue down below in your video. So let me go ahead and show you the workflow that I suggest that you should use when creating subtitles using the marker technique here in Adobe Premiere. First, I'm going to right click and clear all the markers. If this is the first time that you are creating subtitles, you should be aware that the process is a very tedious process and it takes a long time to complete. Therefore, having a script or transcript of your movie will accelerate that process. Our recommendation is that you should have already a script or transcript, so you don't have to type everything from scratch. We already have a script provided to us. In this case, we're using text edit from Apple, and the process is very simple. The only thing we gotta do is to copy every single piece of dialogue from here, and you just select it, go to edit, copy, and then we jump back to Premiere, and of course we look at the timecode here in our timeline, and when you find that timecode where the dialogue is supposed to happen, you just type the letter M in your keyboard, so you create a marker, press the letter M again if you want to create or to use the marker editor, and then in here in the comments, we just press Command V to paste what we just copy in from the text editor. Now, this is our first subtitle. So we are going to add a little bit of uh, duration and we can say OK. Of course, we need to go back to the marker and make sure that the out point is correct according to the dialogue happening in the video below. So if this is the duration that we want, then we're done with this subtitle. Next, we're going to jump to the text editor here. We select the second line and we're going to copy once again, command C, and we go into our application and look for the time code where that dialogue is supposed to happen. Press the letter M once again. But in this marker, I want to show you a different technique of how to add data. I can go into this window over here, select the markers, and the markers window shows me as an empty area and nothing is happening there unless I click on the timeline. Now I can see that I have the actual markers that I have created. Now in this area, I can command V or paste my data. And of course, I can either add some duration down here on the out point and uh, my marker now contains the data and the duration here in the timeline as well. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the third subtitle. So I'm going to go back into my text editor, but I'm going to show you one little thing in here. What happened is that this dialogue happens to have several commas. As you can see here, now we are having commas and now we are actually encountering the problem that I was telling you on the first part of the video. 
if we're going to type this text exactly as it is in our markers, then whenever Adobe Premiere exports this data, Adobe Premiere is going to think that this text over here is one marker. Then this one is another marker and this one is another marker. But that is wrong because all of this should belong to one only marker. So in order for us to avoid that problem when you export a CSV or comma separated value from Adobe Premiere, then we have created a tag. That tag, we're going to have to type it instead of the comma. So we select the comma and we're going to type the tag, which is the greater than, the lowercase c, and the lower than. So as you can see, this might be a tedious process. But if you are working on a word processing document like I am in here, then you should have a command to find the commas and replace them with this tag. So I'm going to do that right now. And right here under the edit, there is a find command. So there is a find and there is a find and replace. As you can see, the shortcut is command F. So I can select command F in here. And then the find field appears right here on top. On the right side of this, there is a replace. So if I enable the replace button, now I have a find field and a replace field. So what I'm going to do is find all the commas and I'm going to replace every single comma with that tag. So I'm going to type the tag in here. So it's greater than lowercase c and smaller than. And if I say replace all, then every single comma in my text is going to be replaced by that tag. Now, the second thing that we have to watch out for is that whenever I select these two lines, these are two lines of text. That means all of this text we're going to have to clean up. So you can do it here in the word processor by selecting that empty space and placing a space bar. So you only have one line of text and that would be perfectly right to copy and paste into the marker. So I'm going to do that right now. Press Command C to copy and I'm going to go back to Premiere and put my playhead where it's supposed to go, type in the letter M, so I can get my next marker, and I can paste. And of course, I can do a time code in here, add a little bit of duration, and make sure that the duration is correctly placed according to the dialogue and the duration down here in the video. So the next example that I want to show you is how to create the second line of text. So I'm going to go back to the editor, and I'm going to go into the next element over here. So as you can see, this particular dialogue is a little bit too long for just one line. I'm going to copy it just the way it is without adjusting any spacing. So I'm going to do a command C to copy, go back to Premiere, create my marker, press the letter M again so I can get the dialogue box in here, paste that data over here. Now I'm going to clean it up either on the text editor or here. So it doesn't matter where you clean it up, you're going to have to clean up all those extra spaces. Now, because this is a long piece of dialogue, we have to decide where we're going to place the actual line return. I would say that I'm going to put it right here in between late and. So the tag that we're going to be used is going to be the greater than bracket, the letter R in uppercase, and the lower than bracket to close the tag. Press OK to accept. And you'll notice that my marker was created here. Now, whenever you have markers that do not have duration like this one, you can also press the option key in your keyboard and click on the marker. That marker gets split in two little tabs. That means that you can grab the tab on the right and add the duration and move the in or the out point just like any other marker. And of course, adjust the marker to fit perfectly with the actual dialogue. Now, from now on, the process basically is a similar process. You're going to have to go back and forth between your text editor and your application here, creating markers. Now, keep in mind that if you are creating the markers and you want to be synchronized correctly, make sure that your actual timeline that you have here starts at the zero time code, just like this one is. If you want to see more of these videos, please visit our YouTube channel at Sugar Effects TV and let us know if you have any comments or questions about certain techniques or specific workflows that you would like to use. So until next time, thanks for watching.